Hey, we have to pause this music for the vlog. Hey, hi. What's well, zoomed in? Hi. <laughs> I'm currently live streaming because it's a Wednesday, it's stream day, and I'm working on button art that I can use to make a custom button set for the people who do the mystery boxes. And so one, some of them are existing art, like the my avatar face, like the Bailey J one, the Bumble Bailey one, and the little ducky pin, I'm just reusing that art. But then I'm doing some other things. So this one's gonna be egg in a hole, and we have Kiki, we have Midna, we have snacks, we have markers, amazing orc, yeah, and then the, little, then the little ducky. So that all together, O plus letter sweater, which is hiding down here. All those combined will make nine and I'm gonna package them in the cute little sets just like I used to do, cause I don't have to do that many of them. So I can easily pin them to the foam and do the toppers. Oh, I have to make the art for the topper still. Yeah, yeah, so I gotta hurry up. <laughs> There's about an hour left in the stream, so. I gotta get going. Also, I'll vlog them a bit more after the stream, but my slot box has arrived. Ah, okay, Whoa, there we go. <laughs> this is medium and large. Uh, I'll talk about them later. Okay, let's make some toast. So the stream is now over. I got done all the button art and I did a little header for the button sets. And yeah, now I am going to, well, first thing I'm gonna do is probably run out and get some cat litter for the cats. I didn't get some when I got groceries last time because I was walking to the grocery store and I wouldn't have been able to carry that back. So I'm gonna run out and get some today. But yeah, first let me talk about these boxes. So yeah, they're called slot boxes. They're made, well, I don't know if they're made in Canada, but they're sold by a Canadian company, Slotbox, and they're designed for Canadian mail because they're skinny enough that they can be classified as letter mail. And that way you don't have to pay for a parcel, which is really expensive in Canada. It's like $15. So anyway, you have to put it in an envelope like this so that it can count as being actual letter mail in an envelope, but it's, it's skinny enough that it can count as letter mail. So very, very thin as you can see. I'm just trying to decide, well one, how many of each size I would want, but also am I gonna use these only for Canadian orders or am I also gonna use them for international orders? I kinda, kinda wanna see if I can find something cheaper for US and international. I'm just gonna see though, like I'm just gonna look into my options. I wanna see what else is out there for skinny boxes. Like I did a little bit of research already, but I wanna look a little more thoroughly. This one is a good size to hold larger items and just more items because my fear with this one is that it's um it's a little bit too small for things that are four by six because the outer dimensions are six inches so the inner dimensions are less than that and so if i did little four by six prints or something they wouldn't fit in here i would have to go bigger for my sticker sheets they could work if i started making them just half an inch shorter it does say that this fits a standard postcard so yeah, I'm gonna look into, first of all, like postcard print sizings, like if I got them done at Vistaprint or Catprint or something, what are the exact dimensions, would it fit in here? And just kind of see how many of each item I can fit in here, like how many enamel pins fit in there. Also like how much does it weigh? Cause how much will it affect my shipping costs and whatnot? Cause before I was just sort of guessing the weights the packages would be. But now that I have some samples, I can actually do tests and you know, that kind of stuff. The downside about the big one is that in the middle, it's not the strongest. Like it's still a pretty strong box, but because it's so wide, the middle does push in a bit. And so it's not as protective as it could be. This size is great though. It's small enough that the middle doesn't sag. I'm gonna fold up this small one too. Let's see what this puppy looks like. This one's too small for US and international, but I could use it for Canadian orders. If someone orders 
like one or two pins. It might even fit three. Like this might be the size I order the most of. Most of my orders aren't Canadian, but if I only use the slot boxes for Canadian orders, this would be the size I would want. Got to pre-fold your edges. So that's the thing with these is they have to be assembled. I'll get faster over time, but like it takes time to do this compared to a bubble mailer that's just ready to go. <laughs> Probably help if I bent that top part back before. <laughs> Pops in like that. So yeah, that's the small one. It's popping open. I mean, it would be taped shut. And like for now, my small ones might be the best size, but if I do start introducing small prints and stickers, then I would need more of the bigger size. So yeah, let's see what fits in here. It starts to get a bit dicey at four because you don't want to overstuff the box. It'll be too thick. Yeah, I think that's a little overstuffed. It's bowing it out a little bit. I think three at the absolute maximum. Yeah, I could do up to three enamel pins, and most people get three or less, so for the majority of my Canadian orders, I could use this and then stick it in a little envelope. I need to order some of the smaller envelopes. I ordered a bunch of the big 9x12s. I don't know why I ordered them that big. <laughs> this might fit into a skinnier envelope. I'm not sure. Maybe I did need the big ones. There are so many things to consider, but yeah, three pins easily fit in this one. It's actually crazy how perfect the width is. <laughs> Look at that. And this one could fit a lot. I think the only reason I would need the large one is if there's some kind of paper item that's too big for this. Yeah, I could probably go about six before we start to get to danger territory. You don't want it to bow outwards. At least that's actually already bowing a little bit. If it was for Canada Post. International, it doesn't matter if it's bowing a little bit. But you also don't want them to just get crushed against each other. <laughs> Keep it new. You can even do it this way. Yeah, that works about the same. Because if they nest into each other, you get about five. So, you know, there are some cases where I might need the largest one. But I think definitely these two would be the most common size. I'm going to look into it a little more though, I'm going to do more research on other box boxes I can get that are fairly small, because what's nice about a small box like this is it weighs almost nothing, and so it can help keep shipping costs down. So yeah, I could look into getting bigger ones for international orders, but if it's too big, the product's just going to bounce around unless I stuff it with a bunch of tissue paper, and it'll just be heavier, so more expensive. So. We'll see. I'll weigh the pros and cons of whatever I can find and make a choice. Okay, I got the cat litter. That was heavy. Each of these is 18 kilograms. I just did the conversion. 36 kilograms is 80 pounds. That is a lot. Also, my new AC unit came in. Woo! Well, that one's gonna go in here. And sometimes in here, if I'm having a long packaging day, I can wheel it in here. Okay, I think my research is done. I was drawing boxes on here. I probably should have aligned them all in one corner, but I purposely did not want to do that. Although I started drawing more boxes than I thought and then I realized it was stupid. This is all my research stuff. These are all Canadian companies or companies that have a Canadian warehouse. So these are all the slot box sizes. I'm sorry, this paper is dirty. This was, I think from my pencil drawing I did, it was my scrap. Anyway, I was drawing boxes here. There's this place, which is local, which is great because I could probably just go pick up the boxes, but the only small one I could find is this big purple line. It's a pretty big box. I don't think I'm really going to need that, but it is only one inch high, which is nice. It'd be a little taller than these guys but yeah I'm not gonna go with that 
Then there's Global Industrial, which is this orange one. It's a six by six by one, or sorry, six by five by one. That was the most promising because it's only a little bit bigger than this guy. It's pretty much the same width. Well, these are the interior dimensions of the box. So exterior dimensions would be a little bigger and one inch deep. So, you know, just a little more hefty than this guy. And it was a pretty good price, but for a thousand boxes, that would have been $630 but they wanted $324 in shipping. I was like, uh, no, <laughs> that just makes it totally unaffordable. So no. Then there's the packaging company, which is this green one here. Wait, did I even do a shipping estimate? Oh no, I didn't because this is a six by six by two. It's two inches deep. So that, that's pretty deep. It's deeper than I wanted, but you know, it's just an option because they're pretty inexpensive, only 44 cents each. But then Uline has the same six by six size. I didn't draw a pink box because the green box is the same size. Uh, they have six by six by one, well 1.25 so it's it's flatter which I like and if you order a thousand it's pretty much the same price. It's 45 cents each versus the 44. And then I also calculated what it would be with taxes and shipping. It would work out to about 55 cents Canadian per box. And that's a lot cheaper than these other guys because the closest size would be this medium one. Again those are interior dimensions would be just a touch wider but it's got an extra inch here and then a little deeper as well so it can hold more items. And so I think I'm gonna go with the Uline ones. I'm still gonna get some slot boxes just for Canadian orders, but in comparison, they're a lot more expensive, especially since I won't be ordering in bulk for these because I don't get that many Canadian orders. I'm unsure of how many to get. I might just do like 70 small, 70 medium. I don't know. Actually, I don't even need 70 medium really. I mean, once I start selling other product types, yes, but just for the pins, considering I can comfortably fit three in here without it bulging, that's what I would mostly need for now. So that's what I came up with. I thought this might be useful if any of you are Canadian and you're planning on shipping things similar to this. I don't know. The rest of you probably found it boring, or maybe you didn't. I don't know. <laughs> I just get very excited about these boxes. Also, I realized this is 6.3 inches long, the sticker sheet, it's not six. I print them off at 6.3 so that once I trim them down, they're closer to six, but they must print slightly bigger than that because even when I cut the sides off, it's still 6.3. So I might just scale these down a little bit in the future so I can fit in the boxes better. And then I was looking at the postcard prints on cat print. They have a couple sizes, but there's the one size that does perfectly fit this box. So slot box was correct about that. And I was pricing out a whole bunch of prints, small ones, because I don't know if I'm ever going to do eight and a half by 11s shipping from home. I think that's something people could just get from Redbubble, even though they don't do the hollow film. But yeah, if I want the hollow postcards, this was sort of the price, like in US dollars on this side, Canadian on this side, that's for 50. And then per card, if I wanted 100 per card, if I got 200 per card, yeah. Then I checked what if it's not hollow, what if it's just extra heavy gloss, that would be the pricing. And then if I did the linen, that would be the price. Cause I don't know if I'll ever do gloss. I feel like I'm gonna do hollow prints and maybe the occasional linen one. Although I wanna see what the linen feels like. Is it cloth-like, like a -like rag? Or maybe it just has the texture of linen, kind of like a, a fake canvas texture. I'll have to look up a video. Cause there's always people who are like, here's my cat print thing and here's what the finish looks like. So I'll look into that. Right now I'm just interested in the hollow. Now that that's all sorted, I think I will officially order some of the boxes. Then I'll just be editing an art video. So I'll check in with you after that. Oh my, Uline says I qualify for a free item. There are things like t-shirts, toques, measuring tapes, little desktop fans, mugs, a dog coat, a dog bowl, NFL casserole caddy, oh, flashlights, a handgun case. Okay, well, I don't need that. A reflective belt. Uh, what I'm eyeing up here is a little event chair. It's just a little folding camping chair, but it looks like one with short legs so that your legs can just be forward on the ground. I want to pick that one. I want that chair. Free, select. Ooh, is that gonna affect my shipping cost? Nope. Good. Yeah, yeah. Submit order. That should be here tomorrow. It says ships today, delivers tomorrow. Wow. All right. Submit order. And then I'll get the slot boxes and oh, and I need to order more of the paper for my printer. 
I'm gonna check Canada Post because I think they I think they give it to you for free. So I'm gonna get more of that label paper. Kate, if you are watching this, I just cannot fathom your level of stupidity. I went to access my emails and I noticed I had these order confirmations from Vistaprint and I'm like, what, that's weird. I didn't just order more stuff from them. I got a delivery, but that's about it. So I went and looked at it and someone had ordered copies of my business card because when you upload to Vistaprint, the files are there and they stole my art from it and made their own business cards with their website link on it, which I can see. And I see their full shipping address. I mean, they shipped it to Bailey Brazo, but then it was their address. So I know your full address. I know where you live. So they ordered copies of my business card and their edited version with their website on it. Somehow it came out to being free. I don't know how they did that. I still double checked all my credit cards and like PayPal and stuff to make sure nothing was charged to me, nothing was. But because I canceled this before it went to print, I received store credit. So I now have over a hundred dollars in store credit. So yay, thank you, Kate. Free money for me, <laughs> possibly. Like, I don't really know what's going on with that. I also made sure to like delete my payment information from Vistaprint. I changed the email associated with it, changed the password, I changed up everything. But like, what? <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. I just noticed. <laughs> Someone just linked me to the thief's Instagram account. This person is so stupid. I think they know who I am. If you're watching this, you're stupid. I'm sorry, you're stupid. <laughs> Cause they emailed me. I noticed I had a couple emails from them. One saying, can you mail me your some of your business cards? And I was like, what? And then another one being like, hey, I have some boxes you could use. Like, what's your address so I can send you these boxes? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Like they, they know what's going on. I know your name, your full address, your website, your Instagram, your email, like I know. <laughs> I mean, I made money out of this deal, so woo. <laughs> oh my God, she just privated her account, but I still have it open. Custom avatars, you can choose the skin color, hair color, and shirt color. DM me if you want one. Girl, ain't nobody gonna be DMing you. <laughs> I bet you all these stickers are stolen too. Well, I don't know about these, these are just words. But like the little panda card, there's like a variety of art styles here. I don't think they drew all these. Thief, thief. I'm not gonna lie, this is some high quality entertainment. <laughs> when this whole thing happened, I was trying to order labels from Canada Post to see if I could get them for free. But it says you have to be a commercial account to order it and so I was trying to log into my old account because I didn't know if that one was commercial or not because I had this official card to go with it and everything. I was like maybe that's a commercial account but it still says you must be a commercial customer to order this product so I can't get the the free labels. I mean that would have been kind of skeevy anyway because I'm I'm not using Canada Post to ship the products these labels are going on to so that's fine. I'll just order more from Amazon. I was monitoring the situation to see if they would get back into my account and sure enough I got an email and it also revealed how they got into my account which was good to know so I could shut that down and when I went to it because I still had the account open like I saw the windows open it uh it showed that they had changed the username and password and I was like oh they're getting smarter they actually tried to lock me out of the account but I still had since I had the windows open and I was still logged in technically I could still tinker with the account so I was on um I was on customer support call with Vistaprint and they were helping me get my account back and they were looking into everything and I could see this person they kept adding stuff to the cart and I just kept deleting it out of the cart it was hilarious it was so fun oh my god and then I got a little distracted towards the end there and they managed to get an order through, but I could just cancel it. So it's like, haha, they got me my account back and they made it so people can't anymore. So yeah, that may have cut into my day a lot, but it was entertaining and uh, got some store credit out of it. So it was worth it. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to edit my art video now though, because I was hoping to be done by now or close to it. But I've reached my cutoff for the day, so I'm just gonna do that tomorrow. I'm gonna go work on pins and sit with Christian. We're gonna watch more of that Doki Doki Literature Club playthrough and just just chill while I do pin stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next vlog. 
So I guess that tells me it was not entirely because of the, uh, the YouTube being down for hours that caused the views to be bad. It was also just like not a good video idea because the concept was, it's like I thought I would maybe do a series out of it. Like, oh, celebrities give me drawing prompts. 